May Allah grant you peace in this life and the hereafter, inshallah. My question, well, this is for someone whose faith has actually weakened. If we are required to be Muslims and the Quran is the final book to be followed by the people, why is there a Bible and Torah before Quran? I mean, we understand that the prophets Musa and Isa alayhim salam were also Muslims. But what is the reasoning behind the Bible coming first and then the Torah and then the Quran? Also, I have a question here for a young girl standing, since this is the last question she asked me to ask it. Should we say salam alaikum to a stranger who we don't know or who isn't a Muslim and why? Okay, my sister, the first part of the question, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the decider. He chooses and he chose what to do. So he decided to send messengers to various nations. Some of them were given scripture. Some of them had the previous scripture with them to teach it. And they were sent to different places and different parts and different nations. But he kept one messenger, the highest of them all, with the Quran. And that is the revelation we have in our midst as a message for entire humanity, not just for one specific place. And he kept it for the end, for the last, for the end. We happen to be in this time where the others have all come. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has also come. So because we came just after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's advent, we have to have followed him and we have to adopt this Quran in order for us to succeed. But if you take a look at the tenets of belief, you will come to realize that we also accept the previous scriptures as the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sadly, they are lost and no longer in their original form. So the discrepancies that exist when it comes to those books do not exist when it comes to the Quran. This is one of the ways that Allah is telling us, look, this is the book that I would like for you here and now. And as you know, something known as the Sharia, which means the laws, the, the rules and regulations governing how you will live and so on. It changes with the changing of time, but belief has never changed. We believe Allah is one. We believe in the messengers, in the books, in the last day. We believe good and bad comes from the almighty fate and so on. We believe that there is a day of reckoning and what have you. All that will not change and has not changed. But what does change some of the rules and regulations of what is permissible and prohibited. So that came with the various messengers with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The final messenger and the final message, it is valid up to the end of time. And this is why we say this is what we will adopt. Although in a nutshell, we do agree with all the previous scriptures. And this is a completion of it. Like the Quran says, we have sent you these books and the Quran as a completion of it. This is why the late Ahmed Didat, may Allah grant him Jannah. He used to always say, the Quran, the final testament. You have the Old Testament, you have the New Testament. One could say, well, why did the new one have to come in if the old one was there? And one can ask so many questions. We have the final testament, my sisters. Then it comes to the issue of greeting. We greet whomsoever we come across with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And that is the greeting of Islam. And yes, if there is a stranger that is there, uh, if there is a need for you to greet them, you may do so. For example, say, and I give you this example, if I'm moving with uh, my own women and so on, there is no need for them to greet a strange man, not at all. But I would do the greeting. And if there were women with him, with the person that I was greeting, then they will do the greeting to them. We also need to know that in Islam, one greeting can suffice for a group sometimes. If we are moving in a group and one of the brothers happen to say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to another group, and then the others say, wa alaikum as-salam, it's good enough. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us an understanding.